TikTok and other ultra short form content is having a profound effect on society, but today we're talking about how it's hurting the shows that we used to love. It's hard to tell if short content is creating a shorter attention span in viewers or if writers are seeing the success of short content and then trying to match that vine-like pacing, which really is still TikTok making attention spans shorter, so. Dream within a dream, huh? I'm impressed. Whatever the case, writing is getting very bad lately, and since I'm closer to 40 than 30, I'm gonna blame the ticker talks and the tweeters. Don't trust your government, kids. It's pretty obvious that current shows are terrified at the prospect of you being given one second to think about what you're watching, so they don't even give you that chance. The recent Witcher Blood Origin opens up with a full monologue about the plot and character descriptions. They were worried sick you'd click away if you weren't spoon-fed every detail. How did we know that Jen from She-Hulk was super good at her job, but was constantly being overlooked because of those damn men? That yeah, was pretty easy. Her friend Nikki straight up told her, us. Recently, Velma episode one punched you in the face with a monologue that explained the plot and the writer's biased worldview. The recent Rings of Power wanted so badly to be mysterious, but they couldn't trust you to stick around, so they had to telegraph every single move. From girl boss Galadriel to Sauron obviously being Sauron, everybody knew exactly what was going to happen in this show immediately. Since there's no setup, there's no payoff, there's no investment, there's no nothing. When they didn't hand you the answers with the test, some of these shows tried to do the mystery box thing, which it. amounted to nothing. Now, I know this is kind of a super hot take, minority opinion, but all those shows sucked. Another hot take, you should smash the like button. Nailed it. What these writers and producers are not connecting is that short content, while it is popular, is also forgettable. Honestly, can you remember even 5% of the reels that you watched yesterday or the tweets that you read? See what had happened at first was. <laughs> of course not. You were numbly scrolling on the throne, just like the rest of us. Now, contrast all that crap with a show that I was actually very surprised to like, The Terminal List. Normally I don't go for revenge fantasies because they get boring really quickly. We get it. You're angry and you're killing everyone in increasingly creative ways. This one though kept me interested because it continued to slowly peel back layers of mystery. There were multiple subplots to follow and wonder about. Wait, is Pratt's character like genuinely crazy? Is he just killing innocent people? The final big reveal on that show was pretty cool, but the problem is there were so few characters left alive that you probably are gonna figure it out by episode seven of eight. Still a good show, I would definitely recommend that one. A big problem with TV trying to adopt these styles is that the mediums and presentation are completely different. Like us, like I'm talking right to you right now. I'm doing the infotainment thing. I cut away to funny clips that I think illustrate my point. We are laughing. <laughs> I try to keep the pace pretty quick. That's normal on this platform. Then again, by TikTok standards, I am moving at a fucking glacial pace. I should use a hip hop track right now. I don't have enough captions going on. I don't have emojis on screen. I should have motion going on. Whew. Different platforms and that's okay. So why are we making shows that feel like YouTube videos or TikTok reels? They're starting to talk funny too. The dialogue is so weird. There's a hot chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. I've been seeing the term chronically online floating around recently as a pejorative, and I think that it perfectly encapsulates the mindset of people who are constantly plugged in. They rabidly support current thing and viciously oppose current thing. You see these people getting upset about dumb shit like Mr. Beast paying for people's surgeries. They also speak or type in a certain way. I'm not anti-social media or internet, but let's be honest, there are a couple of drawbacks. The biggest one is that hyperbole is like the required method of communication online. I was murdered. You were murdered. Sadly, at this point, nobody's going to listen to your opinion about something being all right. That thing either murdered your puppy and slept with your mother, became your new stepfather and threw away all your Pokemon cards, or it 
instantly brought you to Climax, followed by Nirvana, where you were able to converse with Jesus, Muhammad, Krishna, and Deep Thought to discover the secrets to life, the universe, and everything. Usually the thing you're talking about is like a smoothie joint or something. Online, we are all much more sarcastic and sardonic, but when you bring that attitude over to a character dialogue, they sound like assholes. Do we all sound like assholes online? A, a video game, Forspoken, recently came out, and it was widely criticized for many reasons, but chief among them was dialogue you could frame a fucking house with. I didn't sound like that. You absolutely sound like that. No, no, you absolutely sound like that. Yeah, see? Two can play that game. You're fucking stupid. I've heard a lot of it. It sounds like an AI chatbot was fed only Marvel scripts and a Twitter feed, and then the resulting vowel movement was the writing for this game. It's happening more and more. You know, in the wake of Velma offending all of our senses, I saw a lot of people describe the show as being made by writers who only ever talk to other writers. As people regurgitate the distilled views of other people, they begin to lose the understanding of those views. I see this very often with capitalism. It's very chic to hate capitalism, but most people don't really seem to understand why they hate it. You will see people just observe that something costs a certain number of dollars and then they'll tack on like, huh, late stage capitalism, am I right? That's, that is not a statement. That is not a critique. You are not, you're just using buzzwords to make yourself feel smart. This is a critique of capitalism right there. I mean, it's still like 98% incorrect. Capitalism is the greatest system man has ever known, even though it does have areas that are worthy of criticism. I fully disagree with Marx here, but I can at least respect that there's effort and thought put into that. You need to be learning stuff instead of just parroting online quips. For example, uh, not Sorcerer's Stone, Americans, am I right? Okay, I'm not as good at that one. The point is, you need to be putting something in your brain of substance, like a second language. Maybe you want to learn about the history of economic systems, or about world religion. How much do you know about the beliefs of other people on this planet? Or just a good fiction, there's nothing wrong with fiction, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't read YA novels, this shit is still good. Whatever you want, I am a big proponent of audiobooks to do it. There are a lot of services, I keep my library on Audible, if you want a free month, link in the description. So what is causing writing to be this way? Well, I think there might be two reasons and it's kind of a chicken and egg situation. One possibility is that the writers think this is what it takes to retain an audience in the streaming era. Not everybody is gonna watch everything you make anyway, and you can't alter the front of a product at the expense of the rest of it just for fickle people who are probably looking for an excuse to click off anyway. Writers seem to be falling into this trap or they're getting pressure from people who like only look at spreadsheets and they just want to see higher retention. The term retention is a fucking plague. We also have more options than ever before. This is similar to what we saw as the internet was growing. I was there. I was there 3,000 years ago. In order to be heard in the endless sea of the internet, people had to start screaming. And then when that stopped working, they started screaming insane hyperbole like we talked about earlier. Then they tried to trick you into staying. How, you ask? Wait for it. Wait for it. What they did next will shock you. Yeah, like that. Now, in the era of short-form content, writers and executives want their shows to be mad fire bingeable like TikToks, yo. How do you do, fellow kids? So we can see the business motive here for sure, but I think it's more than that. I think we're starting to see online life really carry over into real life. It's very possible that these younger writers ingest so much short-form content that they begin to think that is a natural way to tell a story. If all you consume is content, then all you're going to make is content. And that really speaks to a much larger problem that we're seeing across all media. Everything is content. You remember like a minute and a half ago? 17 hours in internet years. When I said there are valid critiques of capitalism, well, the tendency to make everything consumable is one of them. Now, it's a fine line because like, I don't expect anyone to starve just so I can have an interesting or thought provoking show or piece of art. However, we are currently on the other side of the spectrum where everything is just soulless, tasteless, corporate schlock. Whatever is profitable gets promoted 
everything else is fat to be cut off. What they don't know is that fat is where the flavor is. That steak was so good, I sang to it. Hey girl, how you doing? My name is Charlie. Now, on paper, this is always successful in the short term, but now we're beginning to see the long-term effects as people are starting to feel listless with entertainment. A lot of people aren't sure why, but they just can't get interested in shows anymore. Life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. This is also a huge problem right now in video games as the industry has spent the last decade taking the quick approach to making money at the expense of a quality experience. It's a model called live service where the game is supposed to be continually updated with new features as time goes on. Typically these games are free and they're supported by people buying like a monthly pass to get cosmetic shit or you buy like a one time booster pack or something. Unfortunately, like mobile games before them, the focus is becoming more and more about just getting your money. Oftentimes the games aren't even finished when they launch. I've mentioned before, Netflix is dealing with a similar problem. They will make any show for one season. If it goes viral and they get subscribers, they pump it. If it doesn't immediately perform, there is no second season. After a while, people catch on though, and it doesn't work anymore. See, cheap writing is like rocky soil, where the roots don't take hold. Good writing is like rich soil, where seeds can produce a crop 50 times their initial size. Message. As always, spend your time wisely. Don't give it to cheap products. You deserve better. Also, this is your time to create something amazing. People are thirsty for good stories instead of just corporate boilerplate. Maybe it's just my natural dad energy, but I genuinely believe in you. So go get it. You probably need help. Right after this video ends, I'm gonna hum you a song. Now you've got inspiration. I was wondering if I could take you out.